Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. Today we are talking about his newest release. It, it was released on September 6th of 2022, and that is Fairy Tale. Um, right off the bat, I've had two questions that I want to get out of the way. Uh, first one is, does this spoil the Dark Tower universe, story, series, any of that stuff? The answer is absolutely no. Uh, there are some very, very loose connections, and I have one big connection, uh, but I will save all of that for my Thursday Theorist, which will be up the Thursday after this video posts. But what is Fairy Tale about? Fairy Tale is about a, a young man named Charlie Reed who ends up coming across a ratchety old man, crotchety, curmudgeonly, whatever you want to call it, um, and his name is Mr. Bowditch, Mr. Howard Bowditch. Um, there is another name, but I won't reveal that here because that's kind of a spoiler. Uh, so the book opens up with Charlie, uh, passing by Mr. Bowditch's house and he hears a dog howling and he hears someone in a very low voice calling for help. Come to find out it's Mr. Bowditch. He's fallen off a ladder. This is all in the first chapter. Um, and he needs Charlie's help. Um, but then we do a very quick jump back in time to learn in the same chapter to learn about Charlie and how his mother was killed on a bridge that uh, goes, well, it's one of those over water bridges. Um, it's, uh, I believe it's the Little Rumple River is what it's called in the book. Um, and all of this is important. Everything that you learn at the beginning of the book, um, it, and here, here's another question I, I, I was getting is, for a portal fantasy, is it any good? Um, I don't like fantasy. I especially don't like portal fantasy. Um, uh, one of the reasons I don't is because I feel it's a bit of a lazy bit of storytelling, uh, so, but, uh, sto lazy storytelling device. And what I mean by that is it's very easy to take someone out. Uh, it was the fish out of water scenario where you have the narrator talking from, uh, from their own world or what we're comfortable with, what's common to us. And that makes it describing the other worlds very, very easy. Um, I did not see that as a crutch in this book. In fact, King did some very cool things to make it so that it wasn't really a fish out of water story because uh, there's some very Doctor Who-esque kind of things going on here with um, the language that they speak in the other world versus what Charlie speaks in his own world, so on and so forth. Um, the TLDW, the too long didn't watch here. I know you guys have already been watching for like two minutes, but... I absolutely loved this book. Every single page of it. Not only do I not like Portal Fantasy, I don't like fantasy in general. And the book, this is a minor spoiler, um, but I also want to prepare people. If you're expecting a very quick Portal Fantasy, get in to, to get into this world within the first 200 pages, you're not going to get that. King spends an enormous amount of time getting to know Charlie Reed, this dog named Radar, and Mr. Bowditch. All building the character. It's it is some of King's best character work since Revival. This is also my favorite one of his books since Revival. It's better than The Institute. It's better than The Outsider. Um, it's leagues, leaps and bounds better than things like Billy Summers. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time getting to know Charlie. Um, I know there's a lot of you out there who uh, don't like the slice of life story stories and you just wish that King would get to the horror or to the action or whatever. This probably is not going to be a book for you. Um, it is very character driven for the first, at least the first half of it, because even once he does transport over to the other, which is what he calls the uh, the new the the fantasy land, <clears throat> once he gets transported over there, it still takes a little while for the action to get going. But once it does, once the fantasy stuff starts popping off, I I I I'm honestly feel this way. It is. Close to being as good as the run through Lud in The Wastelands, which is the third Dark Tower book. I was amazed. I was on the edge of my seat. Which brings me to a point that I found exceptional. This is told in first person narrative from Charlie's point of view. Only Charlie's point of view. He doesn't head hop. He doesn't get into the other characters' minds whatsoever. It is Charlie telling this story in first person. And I was constantly scared for Charlie. Um, that's another thing that's been missing from uh, his most recent books is peril. Uh, feeling like the, the the hero is not going to make it. Uh, uh, Dr. Sleep was really bad about that. Even uh, to some extent, so was the Institute. 
Um, it, it's funny though because this one is kind of like a blend of let's say the talisman and uh, probably the outsider. And what I mean by the outsider is the book changes halfway through. It goes from being this very small story to this epic, all-encompassing story in this fantasy realm. Um, and that's kind of how I felt with The Outsider. It was a very small personal story led by an amazing supernatural story. That's what I got here. Um, now, as far I do have one very minor criticism, but I'm not going to knock any points off for it. King go, double, really doubles down with the tradition of fairy tales, like Disney fairy tales. And the whole story, you have um, adjacent to certain characters. Like you have like Rumpelstiltskin is mentioned, and you have an adjacent to that. Um, you have the old woman in the shoe, there's an adjacent to that. Um, so when you get in there, it's, it's not really a spoiler, but the main character starts to turn into the traditional Prince Charming. And what I mean by traditional Prince Charming is it falls into the same trappings as all of the Prince Charmings, which is blonde haired, blue eyed, whiter than Elmer, Elmer's glue. Um, King does bring up the fact that this is goofy, this is stupid. In the story, the character even thinks it's goofy and it's stupid. I think there's something to be said about having the opportunity to change that aspect, to change that the way people look at fairy tale heroes. I think he could have done a little better with that. Other than that, this book is fantastic all the way through it. I love Hannah, and these I'm gonna I'm just gonna be saying names here because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Hannah and Red Molly, both of those characters were highlights of this for me. Um, there's uh, several different stories in this one story. You have like a Count of Monte Crisco, Cristo, Crisco, Cristo, I don't know. You have that, that, you have so many different ones. You have even little bits and pieces from a Game of Thrones, all different kinds of stuff. In fact, there's a form of creature in this one. I can't remember what they're called, but the Skelly Bros from Game of Thrones that the Night Watch has to keep back. There's kind of an adjacent to them, too, in this one. So it's really a big amalgamation of all of the fantasy literature that's been out there. Um, a word of warning before you go out here and, and buy this book. There are pictures. I will show you one that is not a spoiler, but we're going to get into the, why they're spoilers. You have pictures like this. Okay? Now, with these, with the first one, it's not a spoiler. But with the vast majority of the pictures... They spoil something before for the chapter that they're ahead. You're going to see something and you're going to go, oh, well, now I know the fate of that character, or now I know what's going to happen in this chapter, and it comes to pass every single time, which I didn't, I, I, I thought was kind of crappy. I wish it would have been a picture at the end of the chapter. At the end of the chapter. I think that would have helped quite a bit. Um, as far as other characters that I loved, Peterkin, uh, Christopher Polly. All these characters, no matter how small they were, to the and once you start reading, you're going to realize I liked a certain type of character in in this story. Um, but uh, there, you have the uh, fantasy world afflicted by some kind of curse, disease, something they're called the Greys, of all things, um, because they literally turn gray. So there's this uh, this disease going around. You have a a betrayal, there's a there's a hierarchy, monarchy, whatever you want to call it. There's so much lore packed into this book. In fact, I would hazard a guess and say there's just as much lore in this one 600-page book about this one place than there is throughout the entire Dark Tower series because mostly what we get is just little snippets from, you know, Roland, Roland's point of view. We never got the battle of, oh, I can't... I'm gonna get blasted for this one, but you guys know what what battle we didn't get the horn of Eld. Anyways, we didn't get the battle. Um, we never got the battle. We get insight into so much of this world. I feel like this world actually exists. Like I, I was living with these characters, going on these adventures. Uh, my favorite, absolute favorite part of this book is when they get into uh, Lilimar, which is the city that they're trying to get to 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 help Radar at this point. Um, they're trying to get into the city. That was as much fun for me as running as the chase through Lud at the end of the Wastelands. Absolutely phenomenal book. Um, to those of you who worry about King's politics, you're sick and tired of politics, 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 there is absolute, there's almost nothing here. 
that I think there were two or three throw throwaway lines. Even at one point in time, I'm pretty sure King leans to Mr. Bowditch, who is a good guy in the book, being a Trump supporter, um, being more conservative minded. So, but he doesn't go into politics whatsoever. It, not anything that you know conservative uh, people are going to you know tear their hair out. But those people usually find something anyway. So they go in at your own risk. Um, with Sorry, just bumped the camera. Anyways, uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful story. It's twists and turns throughout. It's just, this is this is classic King for me. This is King telling a small story and making it huge and sweeping and epic. It is, at its core, a story about a boy and his dog. But there's also a lot of Stephen King stuff in here. Thursday Theorist episode is going to be insanely long because I have a list of about this long of connections and things that I've picked up. Um, if you have read Mr. Harrigan's Phone, if you have read uh, Low Men in Yellow Coats, if you have read uh, Joy, I think it's Joyland, uh, there's so many books where King puts a young man with an older man, um, usually geriatric, teen, a teenager and a geriatric. Um, you have these two characters and he does that that dynamic very very well and he is at his best in this one when it comes to that in fact i like this more than any of the other ones that i listed like uh mr harrigan's phone which is going to be a movie pretty soon uh let's see here there's also i believe joyland had a had a little bit of that um and the one that i uh oh yeah uh low men ted Bradigan and whatever his name is the boy's name in low men in yellow coats uh, this is the that this is the best version of that dynamic. And while I was reading this, I couldn't help but feel if you guys play the uh, the FromSoft Souls games, um, if you've played Elden Ring especially, and you've played all the rest of them, this book is like an amalgamation of everything that makes Stephen King wonderful. That it, it, it's that down, you know, that close storytelling that makes you feel like you're sitting on a porch drinking lemonade, listen to someone tell you an amazing story. And I think that's what all of us love about Stephen King. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of you who dislike this book simply because it is an amalgamation of all these different ideas. Um, because I, he even references himself in the book. You know, there's Cujo exists in this, not the, the movie and the book Cujo exists, but, uh, and that's, uh, that's really early in the book. I think it's like the first or second chapter, so no spoilers. Um, anyways, the uh, everything that makes Stephen King great is in this book. And if you have not read it yet, I highly suggest you go out and check it out. Um, it gets my highest seal of approval when it, when it comes to Stephen King. I'm giving it an easy five stars, which is so relieving after the one-star crap show that was Billy Summers. But if you're a Stephen King fan, no matter what era of Stephen King you like, there should be something for you in this book. But have you read Fairy Tale by Stephen King? If you have, let me know what you thought of it down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King review. Sorry, I got a camera person in the back who is doing my outro with me. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. And just completely through. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>